Hi, I'm Holly Orpin, an artist originally from Colchester. My practice revolves around sentiment, memory and nostalgia, both personally and culturally. The basis for this has been centred for a while now in silent film, primarily the 20s comedies of Buster Keaton. I have been considering film as a temporal and ghostly medium that allows us to preserve moments in time to be consumed as much as the viewer desires. These moments are unnaturally pinned to cultural memory, stuck in collective consciousness to be inspected and adored for as long as some interest remains. My work exists in collections of objects, drawings, films, writing, and the hosting of communal events. This has often led to exhibiting the form of installations, which is how my final project culminated. As circumstances took away our physical spaces, I decided to make an installation that could be encountered via a website. It contains still image, video, and poetry. My final submission is a wind control sculpture. It has inspired from the previous kinetic sculpture that exhibit in Copdan Gallery. It consists of two parts, two nature stones as anchor points on both sides, and one aluminium film in the middle with two electrical fans mounted on two opposing walls, creating a continuity and offering a dialogue between two materials, exhibition space, and visitors who experience them. Because of the isolation, I provide random videos of my work, giving a chance for the viewers to virtually view artworks as well as hear the sound effect. Even though my video work cannot replace the first-hand experience of encountering artworks in person, but I have tried my best to make it presentable, given the fact that visiting an exhibition becomes very difficult. A digital substitute is better than nothing at all. It is important that online platform is something that I envisioned as a future platform for artists. Hi, my name is Ruby Thomas and in my practice I use drawing to explore themes of ecofeminism and personal identity in relation to landscapes. Throughout my time at Camberwell, my works have always been large scale and densely colourful, aspects that remained important in my work throughout the lockdown period. I spent my lockdown in Cornwall and in this time my work began to directly respond to the rural landscapes around me. This resulted in me beginning to install and disguise my drawings within the landscapes until they look simultaneously plant-like, unnatural, yet also eerily man-made and unnatural. This way of installing the works added sculptural and photographic elements to my practice. The resulting images capture a fleeting moment where the drawings have both a strong presence and a pregnability within the landscape. This further heightens the sense of uncertainty and ambiguity within the work, becoming a personal exploration of how, during this time of isolation, your own identity merges with the identity of the environments you inhabit. Hi, I'm Gabriella Gabs, and I'm an experimental filmmaker graduating this year from Canberra's BE drawing course. I mostly make really intimate films, really personal stuff. On the footage shot on my iPhone, and I'm really interested in capturing those small moments of affection. I think isolation has impacted my practice in a sense that when I'm editing, I'm much more aware and drawn to moments of physical closeness and people touching each other. I got really lucky because all I need to keep working is my computer and my hard drive filled with footage that I've been collecting all these years. All of my editing is very intuitive. I think it's important to mention my ADHD because my constantly shifting attention is one of the greatest tools I've got and I think that's what makes my film so compelling. It's the fact that I'm con continuously making visual connections between different things and then quickly linking those to words and sounds. But I also wouldn't have been able to create what I do without the family I found at Camberwell. They are constantly inspiring me to do the best I can, and I'll always be eternally grateful that I found them. I'm Becky Hancock, and as a multidisciplinary artist, I play to understand my subjects through a material exploration of woodwork, paper mache sculptures, drawing, moving image, and sound. 
The work I make focuses on the tensions of the domestic and everyday, objects, structure and routine, such as trip hazards and door slamming and distorting the ergonomics of specific domestic objects to challenge their purpose and use. This encourages a feeling of confusion and frustration in its apparent inutility and most prominently the impression of limiting progress. I aim to create a conflicting sense of emotion, confusion and fascination, frustration and desire. Creating an isolation was full of restrictions that formed many possibilities. I began to collaborate with the walls that surrounded me at home. The living room became my studio and gallery space. This experience made me realise the site-specific importance of the work I was making. I mirrored the palette of the walls and wooden floor, which which distorted the space as an extension of the room. As I started to introduce contrasting qualities, the work began to dominate the space, spanning across the floor and onto the walls, forcing the viewer out of the space and inviting them to consider the room itself as part of the artwork. Turning a fight into cooperation, or in some extent, fight is a sort of cooperation. There are two obscene camps in this video. The person in the left side middle put out hairs from his broadsword, and the arrows which held by the person who stand in the right side middle were also tied up with hair. Their obscene camp holding the weapons which correspond to the shampoo, comb, and scissor. In the process of fighting with hairs and product made for hair, the fight be more like a joke or a performance, a fight composed by at least two opposite sides, and as contact and in advice from peacemaker, could intensify conflict. Here, here I try to reduce the violence and contrariety in fight, and emphasize the internal partnerships. My work is about the experience of living in 21st century society. My works navigate themes of nostalgia, branding, desire, and how we connect with symbols, icons, and cultural artifacts. I want to discuss how corporations and companies attach themselves to symbols and causes to appear friendly when really they have a darker motive. So I work mainly with industrial processes such as laser cutting and CNC routing and I work mainly with wood and spray paint. So COVID-19 meant that I just had to stop working really and I took a big break and it was really nice. I spent a lot of time reading and um, studying furniture making and woodwork which was nice. I'm Clementina and I'm a London-based visual artist. I make films and my visual practice has grown from my passion for urban exploring. Living in the cities, we are often unaware of the vast invisible spaces concealed within them. And when I began discovering these spaces, I was captivated by their strange and beautiful world. Retracing the stories of these forgotten sites in my films, I hope to return them into our collective field of vision. The themes of invisibility and isolation they explore are even more relevant now in the times of global pandemic. And this made me determined, as an artist, to help reimagine the relationship with the world we are shaping. Hi, my name is Richard Blasco. I'm a Slovakian Prague-based multidisciplinary artist engaged in painting, photography, sculpture, and lastly, installation. My work is focused on debating sublime experiences through forming spaces that would eventually end up becoming environments. In these spaces, I compose objects in such a way that they communicate with the viewer as a singular organism. This forms a possibility of sublime experience. 
When it comes to material, I'm trying to include abjects and found objects into the installation. Their inclusion is based on history and cultural reading of the space. I'm also influenced by Japanese understanding of spirit and how it can reside in an object. These spirit-infused objects can interact with the organic world, but they do it in a silent way that is usually overlooked. My goal is to form an intimate communication between the object and a viewer that could lead into a sublime experience. I'm Jen, a Norwich-based visual artist, and through using lively and highly stylized painterly techniques, my practice explores what it is to be a woman today. Through capturing moments of everyday mundanity in the form of self-portraits, I subvert cliched beliefs surrounding notions of femininity and show a more honest, humorous side to my life as a young person. With nods to pop culture and social media's reign over modern life, my awkward self-portraits allow my viewers to relate on an intimate level to the absurdity of what we do when we're left alone in our private domestic settings. Lockdown caused me to reevaluate my practice. I'd initially planned to create a large-scale installation for my degree show submission, working around themes of female sexuality linked to the Me Too movement. However, the disruption caused by the pandemic led to me wanting to create art that not only brought me joy, but documented my life in isolation in a relatable way. I began by teaching myself how to oil paint with limited space and materials and started to question whether we should feel shame in our quiet moments of self-awareness or simply accept that these are the things that bring us joy. I am Blair. Soil type is a very important method used in my creation. The experimental methods I use have helped me to discover relationships between drawing and visual language and uh, drawing contexts formed naturally and unconsciously in process of creation. The artwork starts with a story I have conducted, a profound study on issues around abortion, and my inspirations came from the viewpoint of Buddhism. The creation and thinking express the connection between various special dimensions and life. During this difficult time, I just viewed an online VR panoramic venue to resolve the fillet between religion and science, and thus help my artwork make new connection with the venue. My name is Ashley and I'm a London-based artist. My mixed media practice involves looking at the everyday, the unseen or unnoticed. I'm continually influenced by the world around me, the out of sight, which is often passed by without a thought. My latest project is focused on the plight of vital pollinators, their place in the world and our dependence on them. My work, In Memory of the Fallen, reflects this. This sculpture suggests a void reflecting the loss and suffering that would happen in a world where vital pollinators have become extinct. Process is essential to my way of working and my installation Seed Corridor echoes this. Made from multiple coloured frames, the pieces connect together to form one long corridor, much like the building blocks within nature. During the current COVID-19 lockdown, my drawing practice has moved into the expanded field of community-based art. By inviting local residents to help plant seed, create a real seed corridor along the road in which we live, the linear aspects of my original corridor has now transversed into the community, creating living lines that connect people and place and creating a sense of the familiar. My name is Adam John Barrett and using my knowledge of ancient Greek fables and designing abilities I create multimedia installations that combine craft techniques with modern interpretations of the subverted classics with influences ranging from ancient Greece to Victorian interior design I've created set color palettes to represent both human form and their surroundings designing creating objects based from domestic settings are parallel to imagery that creates dynamic between the object and the image that implicate the viewer 
Combining digital renditions and analog presentations, I am able to create a uniformed platform where objects and imagery converse freely to create a voyeuristic, homoerotic power dynamic. For this show, I have created the installation. The installation is made up of four elements, the fireplace, Zeus Prometheus in the mortal, the sofa in italics, and Hephaestus, Ares, and Eros all presented in a catalogue format to demonstrate not only what this piece will look like once finished, but also to get a glimpse into my artistic process. Hi, I am Huayan Li, and I am a mixed media artist who use photography and drawing technique combined with different materials to create works. My works always have a connection of strong emotion and a sensitive sense between me and the topic that I try to work on it. As you see in the video, I try to combine my works in every space in my house to let my house become an exhibition space. I use acrylic to paint on mirror. The portraits I made are all of self-portraits. They are just like multiple personalities. The quarantine situation we have now makes me to have time to know myself more. It's an interesting way of painting portraits. When I paint it, I could see myself in the mirror. I choose video to present is to make audience to have a show tour through my camera and can easily having an experience of viewing art. My work explores the contrasting and absurd relationship between organic and synthetic structures, drawing its imagery from marine life, more specifically creatures that portray both enticing and gross forms. I use a wide range of media moving between drawing, painting and sculpture. My pieces aim to address issues of misplacement and vulnerability. A main problem for me during lockdown was to find a new purpose to my practice in the world and rethink the space I presented in. My parents' garden became both a working place and a gallery. I learned I don't need a white cube and that I can incorporate the space into my practice. I started video recording my daily studio time, which gave me a sense of progress and separated my production time from the rest. This is something I will certainly bring into my practice after. Overall, I think we're born to adapt and this whole break from the daily routines and having to build new habits was a positive experience for me. My work explores human sensory experiences, most recently focusing on psychological abuse and trauma in romantic relationships. I aim to use texture, colour, shape and form to recreate sensory and emotional experiences from primary sources. The juxtaposition of creating something which appears soft or beautiful but represents trauma and pain is a strong theme in my work. My work currently focuses on mixed media textile works, creating rugs based on abstract paintings and drawings. The pandemic led me away from larger scale works and installation work, focusing more on the skills I had learned and how I could improve on them. I aimed to make a series of smaller rug pieces which could be shown as wall hangings. I think that the challenges I had to overcome due to the pandemic really helped me grow as an artist. I learned the importance of flexibility and problem solving in my work, thinking on my feet to create new ideas and how to rethink other ideas to create new outcomes really strengthened my practice and the skills that I use in my work benefited from it hugely. I feel a lot more confident in myself and my practice due to these obstacles and I'm really proud of both myself and my peers for creating su through such a strange time. My degree show is called This Instead because it's work made in an alternative environment, that is to say in lockdown. I wanted to breathe new life into my practice by recycling old drawings. I tore these up and combined them with shredded newspaper to make papier-mâché and handmade paper. The female figure was going to be my central subject, inspired by portrayals of women throughout art history and into the present. When the college closed, I was able to rescue some equipment. My tiny flat had to quickly become an improvised studio. The newspapers I used were increasingly dominated by text and images relating to the pandemic. 
That resulted in my making a torso which I called Covid Woman. There were soon three of these, unsettling flatmates, invading my space, pretending to be substitutes for real company. I tried to emphasise this by photographing them in my bed, kitchen and bathroom. I missed the buzz of the college studio but having to work in isolation made me more resourceful. I want to let my practice evolve naturally from where it is today. My current practice is inspired by my niece, Amber, since birth into infancy after constantly receiving images from my sister-in-law on my phone, which I select and draw in a like-for-like -like style using primarily pencil on paper. Reminiscing back to family photos led me to think how times have changed through technology advances. Everyone has a camera on their phone, influencing how we store, view, and share photographs, changing the family album for future generations. Importance of physical photographs has faded, instead we have a huge digital abundance which can be lost so easily. We can't sit as a family looking at photos on phones how we would with physical prints. I've created artwork of Amber for Amber, highlighting photos from her infancy achieving a condensed physical collection, expressing my love for her. Drawing allows me to study and connect to the subject expressing dedication. Since the pandemic a new importance has surfaced, even more grateful we're able to keep contact through technology, but highlighting our reliance encouraged me to collaborate, allowing Amber to finish off her portraits, to feel we're still able to spend time playing together. My work is the extension of all those thoughts during the shower, no matter how flimsy and strange they are. In my range of practices from photographs to motion pictures and conceptual installations, the context of my work becomes an international language that speaks for me. I use my work to present my understanding of the world around me at an emotional level because it does not need to be translated. I look for objects that are normally considered to have a long art function, subjects that are considered abstract or painful to discuss. Can life be meaningful without friends? I create in response to the current circumstance. The use of elements in my work are minimal yet calculated. I find myself interested in adding a twisted sense of dark humor to my work to conceal my loneliness and anxiety. The moving image diary distance comes from that loneliness, evoking my desperate desire to connect with someone in this large city under the current global crisis. My name is Corinna Page. I am a cross-medium artist who tackles themes of play and connection using film, poetry and performance. Most recently, the work has developed into making sound objects and collaborating with performers by inviting them to explore a stage I have set for them. My practice is all about facilitating transformation by expanding on moments of improvisation. I often use modern archetypes and folk stories to frame the performances conceptually and give the audience and performers visual anchors to explore outwardly from. By turning the domestic inside out and supporting moments of conflict, the performer is given the agency to discover and respond to nuances through their own personal lens. I use nature both to contrast and to parallel the domestic rituals present in my films. Through the embrace of the absurd, a space is held for abstract meaning, and from here audiences may engage with the work on different levels and on their own terms. That accessibility is intentional. It is important to me that the work can be enjoyed both conceptually and or intuitively as a candidly unfolding narrative of sound and movement in conversation. I'm Winfred Amwaka and my practice consists of drawing and painting, textiles and non-conventional mediums that ushers my appreciation for the natural environment and in representing my Christian faith. My recent project embraces the faith through iconography. From making an artist book, I ended the project with a cloudscape mural. The development of this project resulted to depicting the image of God by evoking his presence within the sacred place.
The work is introduced from the book of Exodus, where the Israelites fled from Egypt and were protected from Pharaoh by a pillar of cloud throughout the day and where God came in like manner at the tabernacle. Due to the pandemic, I have not been able to use the studio as I pleased as I worked in large scale and I have planned to make a mural as the final outcome. Fortunately, I have been able to accomplish this idea as I had much space in my home and the materials and resources to execute the idea. My work explores queer identity and trauma in romantic relationships. I draw from experiences in my own past romantic relationships to create audio-based poems, installation and drawings. The imagery I use in my work is informed by my tastes in popular culture as a teenager and into early adulthood, which I feel shaped my queer identity. Due to the pandemic, my work has shifted from being more installation and audio based to being more focused on my drawing work with the goal of making a zine. This has strengthened my practice as it has allowed me to experiment in a new format and see how this affects the perception of my work. Working in this format also allowed me to be less overly critical of my drawing based work and made me have more fun with drawing. Overall, the pandemic has made my practice a lot more flexible and made me more focused on the drawing based side of my practice. I am Deborah Hobson, a black artist who aims to create work which is socially engaged and stimulates or provokes a political dialogue or disturbs the status quo. I have produced uh, photographic images and paintings as an artist's response to COVID-19 and the disproportionate numbers of African, Caribbean, Bangladeshi and Pakistani people who are dying from the illness. My COVID-19 paintings are partial portraits of four black NHS workers and one elderly white woman who worked for the Inland Revenue and was a vicar's wife. I chose to paint four black victims to reflect the harrowing statistic that black people are dying at a rate of four times more than white people. The portraits show a part of their faces to suggest the notions of fracture or broken. The majority of the photographs of the COVID-19 victims that have appeared in the press are of smiling, happy faces. I wanted to make a statement in paint that says they are no longer as they were. They have passed on because of this terrible illness. My name is Christy. Drawing is my main practice of work. I create drawings from my imaginations, inspired by my experience from my daily life. And I'm also interested in how the audience reacts and understands my drawings. From my previous work, I printed out my drawings into stickers and asked the audience to stick them on the wall. The outcome was great. I wanted to continue this practice for my degree show. I planned for a larger event with more interactions and more fun. Due to the current situation, I couldn't interact with the audience face to face. I decided to bring things online. My plan was to create a website or application. The audience can interact using their computer or phone. There will be more room for creativity and more diversity. I simulated my plan by sending a Photoshop file out to the public. In this file, my drawings are layered out. The audience are asked to play with these drawings using the tools in Photoshop. The given photos are my drawings and the response from audience. Hi there, my name is Safina. I am a London-based fine artist from Singapore. I often draw influences from the nuances of everyday conversations transforming the seemingly mundane into tangible representations of emotional turmoil and the complexities of the mind. My creative process involves extensive self-reflection, while I deem my art as a form of self-expression, I strive to create art that is understandable and applicable for all whilst providing a safe space for self-reflection and meaningful conversations. My practice attempts to explore the semiotics through written language, symbolism and abstract work. I have in-depth experience in utilising different art mediums. Due to the pandemic, creating from home was not something I was well adjusted to. I eventually became accustomed to the challenge of being physically away from my peers and the guidance of my tutors. Working and creating independently introduced me to what life may be like after university, specifically 
He has helped me become more confident in forming my own opinions and creative processes. My work is the result of a lifetime of research and curiosity. There are no set physical characteristics, but I gravitate to making work that is cryptic, sometimes obtuse. I'm not trying to trick anyone, I just find it difficult to approach art making as a visual practice. But if I create some layers and rule sets between my research and materials, I can create something I find both aesthetically satisfying and intriguing via my research base. Materials I use often are wood and covered maps. I like both for their ability to carry emotional weight through the grain and the textural nature of the material. I particularly like maps as an antiquated form of data transmission and what it means when you spoil that data transmission further, either by painting over it or destroying the map. In response to the worldwide pandemic, I have reduced my practice from larger sculptural pieces and thought more of how my world from my environment where I'm currently isolating interacts with the greater world outside. Hi, I'm Sam, and in my practice, I'm interested in gender bending and expressing various forms of identity through the use of a narrative. I think the expression of queer identities has become more vital than ever. And communicating through photography, I'm reflecting upon the feminine things I was held back from experiencing as a young gay kid in a straight world. By creating characters and adopting their identities in forms of self-portraiture, ultimately bringing attention to gender norms and the implications this has on young people growing up. Uh, dealing with coronavirus, my practice shifted to something more photography based, whereas before I was considering more of an installation. I found not having access to university resources was an obstacle at first, but I overcame that by setting up a photography studio in my shed, and I found ways to shoot the self-portraits entirely by myself. The process has encouraged my interest in studio photography and developed my ability to conduct a shoot. Also, the process of editing to convey a nostalgic mood so the images look like they were from a yearbook has helped train my abilities. I'm looking to explore more with models and staging and to connect with musical artists for promotional material, which is the avenue I'm beginning to take. The idea of my work smells are inspired by scents we smell in one point of our lives, whether it be out in the nature or even in our own kitchen. During the quarantine, I really started paying attention to what surrounds us and the components of it. Therefore, these fragrance recipes are from the nature that surrounds us, or even food smells we have in our kitchen. By recreating and playing with the smells, I hope to inspire and remind people of what we are surrounded of and how these elements influence our perception of the world. These recipes are a redefinition of olfactory wheel, which are traditional and base components for almost every fragrance we smell. I hope this work can expand our understanding of the phenomenon of smell by introducing new ideas and viewpoints about what it mediates and how also by having the chance of um, olfactory investigation to explore the social illusions of odors and their perception. I can engage with people to get them thinking with their noses and making community connections through scent. I'm Demi Styles. I'm a visual artist working in painting and sculpture. Influenced by the gender skepticism and writing of Judith Butler, my work investigates the pressure endured by femme and female aligned people as a result of gender performance. Depicting the conflict between the femme person's right to femme expression and the burden compulsory femininity imposes upon gendered people in binary society. In response manifesting my subjects as icons of endurance in grandiose portraits, the scale of my work is of importance in my practice, making paintings upwards of two square meters. This relates to my belief in the right of femmes and female aligned people to take up space in galleries, industry and wider society. Frequently depicting my subjects in domestic spaces, I invite the viewer to look analytically at the implication of the domestic environment. Onto this discourse into femme identity, I project themes more personally related to my own experience. <laughs> 
using recurring symbols to signify these references in such contributing to ambiguous narratives, which I invite the viewer to attempt to decode. My name is Megan Cartwright and I'm an artist currently based in Suffolk. I use intimate and introverted writing practices as the foundation for many of my works. I take traditionally private forms of expression and make them the subject of drawings that are eventually experienced in public settings. Before having to leave London, I was using graphite pencils to draw on the walls of the studio where I was working. I was imitating the sorts of confessional and personal graffiti often found in public toilet cubicles. Just as a personal diary encourages intimate expression, public toilets also grant their occupants a degree of privacy, allowing people the chance to anonymously and freely express themselves when the door is locked behind them. To continue developing my practice during lockdown, I started to draw in the bathroom space where I was living. I filled the walls with rapid unbridled sketches, detailed drawings, wordy written musings and large scrawled out text. The bathroom turned into a type of diary. The personal drawing and writing recorded my intimate thoughts, feelings and experiences and left a trace of my life behind on the walls. Latrinalia turns bathrooms and toilet cubicles into arenas for people to enter into and connect with somebody else's ramblings, sketches and secrets. My own artwork provides the same opportunity for this relational viewing to occur. Hi, my name is Freya. At the beginning of lockdown, I spent lots of time in my garden and began guerrilla gardening on public spaces around my house in Camberwell. Regenerating spaces is an artistic act with a strong sense of nurture for our planet, care for biodiversity and ecosystems, and for the public that will enjoy this area as they walk past. This gardening gave me a new insight into water, seeing it as a life facilitator. This piece acts as a life support machine for its plants. Interested in water's properties and unseen forces, I explored its reaction to sound vibrations, using light to project the surface of the water onto the wall.